Dear colleagues, welcome from Copenhagen, Denmark. This is a totally unedited fecal surgery. After applying the speculum, always give a thorough wash of the ocular surface with povidone iodine 5% and BSS or ringa lactate. And now give the main incision. This is a 2.8 millimeter incision at the posterior aspect of the limbus. You can see some blood oozing out from the lips of the incision. And in this case, only one side port has been made on the left side about two and a half clock hours away from the main incision. And now, viscoelastic substance is injected into the anterior chamber and it is sprayed over the corneal epithelium. This improves visibility and it protects the corneal epithelium and now is the time to do capsular access. Incise the capsule with a 26 USB needle and raise a nice capsular flap. Take a uterator forceps, hold this capsular flap with the uterator forceps, go anticlockwise and remain at a certain distance away from the margin of the dilated pupil and do an adequate sized capsular excess. And now do hydro dissection. Take BSS and a 27 gauge cannula. Inject small amounts of BSS just underneath the anterior capsular rim at multiple points. Tap the nucleus, rotate the nucleus and then inject some more viscoelastic substance. And now is the time to introduce the tip of the FACO handpiece. Here it is. This is Oatly Catrix 3 FACO machine and I am in FACO 2 mode from the very beginning. Not FACO 1, FACO 2 mode means high vacuum, high flow rate and adequate amount of ultrasonic energy. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus and it is chopped. And it is rotated. This is the second chop. The first chop, along the first chop, the this is separated and other hemineucleus is also chopped. Fecal power used in this case is 65% rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. Each nuclear fragment is worked on with ultrasonic energy and it is emulsified and removed. See, there is no chattering of the nuclear pieces. The nuclear pieces always remain around the tip, around the aspirating port of the tip of the FACO handpiece. It doesn't go here and there and thus you protect the corneal endothelium. This is the last portion of the nucleus. Uh, what, you, what you do is during the last portion is you be very careful of the anterior chamber stability. So the nucleus is managed, inject some more, some viscoelastic substance. You can clean the cortex and several ways. You can use bimanual irrigation aspiration. You can use coaxial irrigation aspiration. And or this very simple instrument. This is a 23 gauze direct Simco cannula. I have made only one sideboard because I am not going to use bimanual irrigation aspiration in this case. So, although the side port is little larger, say about 1.4 millimeter or 1.6 millimeter in size, you are making only one side port. That's it. The cortex is cleaned, and your capsule, the posterior capsule, looks very clean. And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. 
and here it is this is a foldable intraocular lens being implanted under irrigation you can call it hydro implantation because you are keeping the anterior chamber formed by hydro that is PSS the lens is in the bag dial the lens with the irrigating probe itself and remove whatever viscoelastic substance or steer in the lumen of the cartridge just irrigate it out this is a beta of moxifloxacin now hydrate the stroma on either side of the of the paracentesis so that this step on become becomes waterproof that's it this is the last or final lavage of the anterior chamber this is very important remove whatever you have used and leave only pure BSS and this will eliminate the risk of TAS toxic anterior segment syndrome will never occur you will give a final lavage of the anterior chamber form the anterior chamber and never forget to check the integrity of the wounds there should not be any leakage from any side thank you very much for watching hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills I'm in Copenhagen now but I want you to be a better surgeon